This is Luton. Welcome to my new series exploring the universe of Warhammer 40,000. 40k is a vast and fascinating universe with lore so complicated you could spend literally weeks discussing it. So one of the most difficult choices for me was where to begin with it. Now the universe of 40k is such a mass of cross-referenced nuances and interlinked stories of revenge, justice, hatred and brutality, it's like trying to explain the whole of human history to an alien race. So breaking the lore of 40k down into YouTube videos is quite a complicated matter. Now one last thing to mention is that Games Workshop themselves have stated that in the 41st millennium information is fragmented, intercepted, distorted, suppressed and often flat out just false. So with this in mind, a lot of 40k lore, beyond stuff that you would consider out and out facts, can be regarded more as hearsay than something that's just set in stone. This is especially true of ancient lore and race histories. This is in part because it allows Games Workshop to make changes to the universe without upsetting devout players, but it also makes a lot of sense in reality where war has been raging since almost the beginning of time. Also if you look at humanity, it's often true that history is written by the victors. And so with that in mind, you might expect some facts within the universe of 40k to be anything from an eyewitness account to complete misinformation, uh, which then you know translates to becoming the gospel word as it's passed down through the ages. So where do we start our journey into the grim darkness of the 41st millennium? At the beginning, of course. We leave the Imperium of Mankind behind and travel some 60 million years before to the earliest time where one peaceful, hyper-advanced race were masters of their own destinies. These beings are simply referred to as the Old Ones, and they are, as far as recorded, the first sentient life in the universe. Their lives focused on the acquisition of knowledge and to seed the universe with life, terraforming and creating new species, including one unintelligent ape-like species on a small blue planet in the Milky Way. Now very little specific details exist around the Old Ones themselves, but the story of their place in the grand scheme of things is where we will begin. Now the Old Ones had great psychic powers and built many wonders of godlike beauty and size. And it was this vast understanding of the universe that allowed them to manipulate alternate dimensions and begin constructing their arguably greatest achievement, known as the Webway. Now, as its name describes, this is a web of pathways that allowed the Old Ones to travel through a vast sea of dimensional energy known as the Warp. The Warp was a dangerous and disruptive expanse of powerful psychic energy parallel to real space, although in the early times it was a lot more passive than it is in the 41st millennium where it's extremely full of dark, horrific, chaotic energy. So to travel through it though at this time it still required protected psychic pathways and that's what they constructed. The webway enabled the old ones to travel across unimaginable distances at incredible speed, essentially crossing space that would take millennia comparatively instantaneously, enabling them to reach the far corners of the universe. They believed that all life was useful, and they are known to have brought about the rise of numerous important species and formed thousands of worlds, which they also made their own. As the Old Ones expanded, they encountered other advanced species, although none as far as themselves, once again remembering we are at this time millennia before the dawn of mankind. One such race the Old Ones happened across were known as the Necrontir. The Necrontir's planet of origin was barren. It was radiation blasted due to their violent nearby star, making their home incredibly hostile to life. Their bodies were riddled with radiation sickness and they lived extremely short lives, constantly preparing for their inevitable deaths. Their cities were built in anticipation of their demise, little more than vast tomb complexes with a few temporary homes for the living. Now they vainly tried to improve their mortality through scientific means, but after centuries they were consigned to the fact that their bodies could not be changed to survive on their home planet. Somehow though, despite this, they altered their plans to instead reach to the stars in a bid to escape their cursed cyclical fate of painful, unending death. And this is where they were to encounter the Old Ones. 
However, while the old ones were able to travel anywhere in space in mere steps and possessed near immortal length of life, the Necrontier could not have been more opposite. They had to use slow moving, non warp ready ships equipped with stasis crypts that enabled the, you know, the short lived crew to survive out amongst the stars. They clad their ships in living metal, which was a metal literally that grows and lives like that of an organic material. And this was due to allow it to withstand the rigors of space flight. Despite this, though, colonization for the Necrontier was a slow and painful process, as was everything in their history. But upon meeting the old ones and seeing their secrets of near immortality sparked a hope was raised within the Necrontier. They finally saw a chance to be saved from their pain, a chance to live. And they petitioned the old ones for the secret of eternal life, but were refused this knowledge. In many ways, this refusal of knowledge doomed the universe to its fate of unending war and the events that were to follow. The Necrontier burned with the resentment and hatred of the Old Ones and their unwillingness to save them from their pain and suffering. In addition to this, the Necrontier Empire were battling brutal civil wars known as the Wars of Secession, which the various dynasties of Necrontier were battling one another. The encounter with the Old Ones led the Triarch, the ruling council over all the Necrontier, believed that an external foe would unify their species, and their bitterness to the Old Ones led to war. And it worked. The prospects of vast spoils and the secret to immortality brought the Necrontier dynasties together to launch their campaign against the Old Ones. Their hopes, however, were typically short-lived, as the Necrontier were unable to match or outmaneuver the Old Ones, whose use of the webway enabled them to always reinforce, preempt, and win battles against the Necrontier. Eventually, conceding defeat, the Necrontier were forced to retreat to their homeworlds, defeated and importantly more bitter and full of hatred for the Old Ones than ever before. At this time, the Old Ones forgot about the Necrontier. They'd been vanquished. But the Necrontier had no intention of dying out so silently. Instead, they redoubled their efforts to find new weapons to destroy the Old Ones and achieve what they sought so passionately, the secret to immortality. During their research for new weapons, they became aware of creatures living from the destructive solar radiation from their sun. These life forms were named the Satan, star gods in the Necrontier's language. Now, the Satan at this early time were not particularly aware of anything beyond their need to absorb raw energy and power. Their godlike energy seemed nearly invincible to the Necrontier, the perfect weapon to unleash against the Old Ones, but if only they could harness that power. And they did through their living metal. They constructed bodies, empty husks, shells for the Satan to inhabit. And it's unknown how they contacted the Satan initially, but through some means they encouraged the Satan to take physical form using the living metal bodies that were constructed. Now, a Satan known as the Deceiver spoke with Zarek, the Silent King, Lord of the Necrontier Triarch, and told him how long ago the Old Ones and Satan had also been at war, but the Satan were defeated and scattered. This common foe brought the Necrontier and Satan to a close alliance, and the Necrontier began to worship them as gods for their supreme power. But as the Satan, once without conception of the world around them, became more manifest and intelligent, it was clear they were not the salvation that had been hoped for. The Satan offered Zarek an offer for his race, immortality. But this was not to be the immortality of the Old Ones, but that of living metal shells that they had created for the Satan. They proposed that a great period of biotransference would take place to give all Necrontier that which they craved most, unending life. In his desperation for victory, glory and immortality, the Necrontier Zarek agreed to transfer all other Necrontiers into living metal bodies, that their flesh would be destroyed, but their minds and essence would live forever. This, however, was the biggest tragedy ever to befall the Necrontier. Their minds were dulled to that of soulless drones, and only a few leaders maintained some semblance of their former selves, including Zarek. And it was at this time that Zarek realized he had made a terrible, terrible mistake and doomed his entire race. The Satan turned the Necrontier into slaves, ruling over them with extreme disregard and cruelty. The Necrontier were extinguished from the universe forever, and the time of the Necrons had begun but worse was still to come. We now return to the Old Ones, 
who during this time were largely unaware of the Necrontier's demise or the resurrection of their ancient enemy, the Satan. This ignorance would prove catastrophic, as the Old Ones were left with no time to prepare an adequate defence against one of the most destructive wars in the history of the entire universe, known in the ancient history of the 41st millennium as the War in Heaven. So named, it was a war literally between gods and on a scale of unimaginable proportions, making the wars between races in the current time of Warhammer 40,000 seem like mere skirmishes by comparison. This war against the Old Ones was very different to the first. The Necrons not only had more advanced weaponry, they now were protected in their immortal living metal form and the Old Ones mastery of the warp and webways was continually countered by the Satan with their immense power over the material universe. In this time the Satan spread out like vicious predators consuming entire worlds feasting on the creations of the Old Ones who now retreated to only their strongest bastions to plan a way out of complete annihilation and all the while entire worlds were raised, suns extinguished and entire star systems devoured by the uncontainable Satan. The Old Ones had now retreated to the webway only venturing out when it was essential but even these once impenetrable paths were not untainted by the fury of the Necron. Facing complete extinction, the Old Ones seeded new life they hoped would protect them. These new races would have powerful psychic abilities to defend against the Satan. The early creations were the Eldar, the Knib and the Rashan, and whilst the Eldar would live through to the current time, almost nothing is known of the fate of the Knib or the Rashan, and it's entirely possible they were destroyed completely by the Satan and Necrons, with only the Eldar surviving this early time. Among their other creations were also those which would become mankind, beasts that lived in their own ecosystem but had no specific role defined for them by the Old Ones and were left to their own natural evolution. During these ancient times the Eldar learnt a great many secrets of the warp from the Old Ones who regularly visited them, mentoring them on how to control their psychic powers and learn to use the warp. Eldar legends originating from this time state that they were raised by figures of shadow and light, referring to them as First Ones. It is said they were the first to have reached into the starry night and to be older than gods yet mortal and subject to time. They are said to have left the Eldar and returned to the sky in order to allow their charges to develop over millennia. They would return later in strange vast vessels but that were worn and scarred. This was of course due to them being engaged in an unending war against the Satan with the Old Ones returning to inspect the Eldar and judge if they were fit for the war ahead. The Old Ones are known to have aided their younger race in focusing their psychic abilities to create warp derived entities and use them as weapons against the vampiric gods of starlight which of course is a reference to the Satan. Now the Eldar legends continue stating that in the time of the first ones now dwindling in number to the point that they lost influence among the Eldar and without their creators sensibility and guidance the Eldar's psychic creations born from the warp itself changed from sentient weapons into living gods of the Immaterium who were the very very first of their kind and this change instigated not only the final catastrophe for the first ones but in time would come back to haunt the Eldar themselves with apocalyptic consequences. The war in heaven continued and by the time the Old Ones had prepared their forces there were only four Satan in existence, but swathes of other life forms in the galaxy the Old Ones had seeded were already extinguished. The Old Ones finally unleashed the new races, sending the Necrons reeling as the power of the warp was an anathema to them, and they struggled to contain the advance of this new offensive. In response, the Satan unified for the first time in millions of years. However, now a new and devastating unforeseen side effect of the Old Ones creations began to manifest in this period as the young race's psychic development disturbed the energies of the warp itself, and from this pure energy came mass and form and older warp entities became predatory as the warp began to become a more hostile environment. Cracks in reality would appear and the entities of the warp saw entry into the material universe, forcing the Old Ones again to bring about the emergence of new species to defend their final strongholds. They were now under assault from so many different directions they barely had anywhere left to turn. Among their creations included the green-skinned ultraviolet Croc, later known as Orcs, and the technologically adept Jokiro. 
Now though, the old ones, even with their vast knowledge of creation and their near immortal lifespan, had run out of time. With their interstellar network being breached, their greatest work and places of power being overrun by the horrific beings of the warp, tragically it manifested by the very creations that they had formed to save them. Among the most insidious of these entities were the enslavers, who penetrated and dominated the minds of the younger races in order to open portals for themselves to the material universe. The plague of enslavers was the final blow for the old ones, who were scattered forever, their power and knowledge destroyed. The combination of an unending onslaught from the Satan, combined with the mistakenly unleashed warp horrors, led to the old ones complete destruction. The surviving Satan and Necrons had the final pleasure of seeing the demise of their most bitter enemy. Now after the destruction of the Old Ones, Zarek, lord of the former Necron tier Triarch as you will remember, was left biding his time, waiting until the time was right to strike and lead a Necron revolt against the Satan. The Necrons focused the unimaginable energies of the living universe into cataclysmic weapons created from all their amassed knowledge that were too devastating for even the Satan, the godlike Satan, to endure. And these Satan, near gods almost impossible to destroy entirely due to their very nature, were instead shattered across the universe into energy shards. Zarek now saw that having destroyed the Satan, the remaining new races created by the old ones such as the Eldar were becoming more powerful, knowledgeable and dominant. The Necrons, exhausted by eons of war, could not stand against them. So rather than risk certain annihilation, he ordered that the Necrons withdraw into their tomb worlds and slumber in the Great Sleep, to reawaken 60 million years in the future and assert their dominance over the galaxy once more. The Silent King, however, did not join his people in slumber. He destroyed a protocol that allowed him to control over the Necron race and journeyed out into the void of intergalactic space, where he may not find solace but instead penance for dooming the Necrontier race in his deal with the now vanquished Satan. It was rumoured that the final Old One survived destruction from the Satan and Necrons. This survivor hid away where he continued his old ways of tweaking, dabbling and prodding around. Now we'll discuss about what he may have been doing in future content. When he was done with his work, he departed into the warp in order to hide and watch as the Old Ones knew the warp intimately. As the Necrons now retreated into stasis until this time of cataclysm had ended, the lesser creations of the Old Ones such as mankind continued their own path to development, to eventually rise as powerful forces in their own right. The mantle of galactic dominion would now pass to the Eldar, but the Eldar would survive where the Old Ones did not and would see the last Necrons depart into their great sleep after they had turned on the Satan. Now that concludes our history of the Old Ones in Warhammer 40,000. This really is the foundation for all events that would follow and sets a lot of facts and implications into future events. So join me next time as we discover what the Eldar do with 60 million years of time on their hands. Thanks for watching today guys. As always, I need your support. Please get involved in the comments. Tell me what you thought about this video. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you then.